All right. Awesome. So today we're starting pretty much where you guys left off um, at the uh, the day nine branch. Um, if anybody wants to clone it down, uh, spin up your, your Docker container, make migrations, uh, kick off the server. Again, it's the Pokemon example uh, for the end of day nine branch. So <clears throat> um, today, what we're going to talk about a little bit are serializers. So we've dealt with these a little bit before. Um, not very much, but we've, we have dealt with them. Um, what can you guys tell me about what a serializer is slash does? It, uh, the serializer uh, converts the query set object into like a string format, or something like that, or closer to JSON, I guess, or into a JSON. Okay, that's 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 kind of true. Um, anyone else have a uh, another response that they'd like to uh, they'd like to share? I was thinking of the serialize command, actually, not the serializers. I mean, they are very closely linked, though. All right, so here let's go. Let's go back to Pokemon. Oh, uh, what's API v one? There we go. Okay, so let's let's take a look at what our thing looks like right now. So we're printing out. Um, we're going to try getting a Pokemon. We get the model of the individual Pokemon. We get its primary key. And then we get a bunch of fields, right? So we have the name, level, date encountered, it was captured, description, and then moves, which is this stuff. So can somebody tell me what, what is in moves right in? Like what 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 is this, the thingy that I've highlighted? It's a dictionary containing tuples. Okay, perfect. So how is that dictionary created? In the the models? Maybe. Let's uh let's find out. So here, let me switch over to the S code and let's try to dig into how exactly this was created. So let's see, this was in get all Pokemon. So that's probably gonna be in our Pokemon app. Uh, let's see. So <clears throat> the moves is a many to many field. Okay, that's helpful, kind of. But what I'm curious to see is how that many to many field, because remember back when you guys were first learning about Django and we played with the Django console and we tried printing out like a many to many field or a model and it returned a query set. Well, the thing that we just saw is very clearly not a query set. It's a Django or a JSON styled object. So how do we go from a query set to that JSON styled object? Which, which, yes, serialize. Or more specifically, the serialize function. So as we can see by the very extensive comments on the right, so what the what serialize the function lets us do is it it's a built-in function in Django that takes our query set and turns it from a query set into insert data format here. Uh, in our specific use case, we are going to be focused on JSON data format, um, or it turns it turns it from a query set into a JSON formatted binary string, which we can then turn from a binary string into regular human and machine readable JSON. Okay, so again, th that is the essential function of a serializer. Now, oh, here, let's, um, let me go back to this. Let me kill my server very briefly. So hypothetically, what happens if I were to remove the stuff in this for loop? So if I just comment out this entire thing, 
what is going to change about um about my cereal life? Or going to change, sorry, what's going to change uh, when I run that API call? It's no longer going to have moves in the dictionary. Okay. So is move, are moves just going to be deleted completely? I think it's going to, it's a many to many relationship, right? So it's going to have the, the ID or something. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Let's hear some other voices chime in on this. Would it be a query set object? Maybe. All right, well, let's get some more participation. Come on, there's more than three people here tonight. Uh, Matt Hemsworth, what do you think? I think that Vincent's correct. I think it'll just be like a, a list of integers. Okay, yeah, let's take a look. So here, let me save it. Let's go back to here. And let's hit refresh. Oh, I killed the server. That's why. Let me respin that up. All right, spun up again. Yeah, take a look at that. It's it's just a list of integers. That's all it is. So again, what the serial so what the serialized function lets us do is it goes from that list of integers to printing out the JSON form of an object, which is great. However, uh, let's, oh, oh, the other additional benefit of a serializer, again, so let's say that, you know, I got this API data uh, in this form without it being, without the moves being serialized. Everything else is serialized, right? But the moves aren't. So if I wanted to figure out what moves Pikachu had, I would have to do this API call and get the IDs of the moves. Then I would have to make another API call to moves to get a specific move with that ID. It, it, it's slightly annoying to say the least. So and this is where the benefit of the serialized function really comes in handy. So if I refresh the page again, we see when I do run the serialized function, it spits out all of this wonderful data that we can definitely totally use. Um, however, nice and neat does this look. Like if, if you are somebody who is receiving the data back from this API, do we really want necessarily most or all of this data? Uh, probably not. There's like a bunch that it's not useful. Like the, I guess, date encountered some of the stuff, the PK model. Yeah, exactly. We don't need like all of that stuff. So let's go back to our views. Let me reshare my screen. And here, let me, oh, let's quit the server for a second. And all right, so I, I again, I want to get some participation on this. Based on everything that you, we slash you guys have learned so far, is there any, how can we restrict the view so that when I go to the API, let's say, you know, let's look at our, our Pokemon. Let's go models. Let's look at that Pokemon. Let's say the only thing that I want for my Pokemon is the name, when it was captured, and the moves. I don't care about the level. I don't care about the date. I don't care about the description. I just care about name, capture. Oh, no, not that. Name, captured, and moves. Hypothetically. Right now, in our views, how can I make it happen so that the only data that gets sent over is are those specific fields only? Is there any way that we can do that based on what we know right now? Uh, the way I did it when we were doing the school APIs, I just deleted the fields that I didn't need. So I did a for loop for each Pokemon. So delete them from the model or delete them from the, the JSON? Just from the JSON. 
Okay, that's that's one option. Um, what are some pros and cons of that approach? All right, Jerry, let's see. Let's hear the pros. Uh, so either Matt, if you want to share some, or anyone else who has ideas as well. I mean, it was only the only thing I could think of at the time, but the uh, the cons are it's not very um, repeatable, I guess. Yeah, I mean, number one, it's not repeatable, right? Number two, I mean, let's say that later on, you don't just have, so the for loop really depends on having just those, like a fixed number of fields. Let's say later on, you change your model, and now your model has, let's say like five additional random fields. Then you're gonna have to go into your for loop and say, hey, for loop, okay, we're check the additional five fields as well and see if they're in this list of accepted fields or if they're outside of them. If they're outside of them, then remove the data. So that can be a little bit of a problem. Um, additionally, you know, the for loop approach may not be the fastest. Um, just thinking like, in terms of space, because what it's doing, what you're doing there also is you're first creating, let's say we have like 5,000 Pokemon and each Pokemon has like 15 attributes or like 50 attributes. 5,000 times 50 means you're going to be having 250,000 items in this JSON thing that you're creating. And then you're going to be filtering stuff out from that and removing ropes. It, does it give you the desired end result? Most likely, but it does so at the cost of being pretty inefficient at very large scales. And again, if you ever want to add a field or remove a field, it, it can be a little bit difficult. So that, again, it's a good solution, but maybe not the most effective. Anybody else have ideas? How, again, based on just what we know so far, what other ways might there be in order to remove fields from our JSON that we are spitting up? When you're filtering it, uh, you can do filter and then do dot values and it'll give you the, the value of whatever you select. That's what I did for the grades object in the school. So, so you mean like, so where would you filter? Like on line 23? Uh, it's it's different because for you're doing like the order by, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, I guess you can do it there, right? Because that's where it's uh you're getting the objects, the query set. Okay, so you're saying kind of like the same thing that you did for move that we did for move yeah. data down here, right? Oh, okay. uh, and then instead of that, you add the dot values, and then like you can do the name, and it would only be the name in there, I believe. And I think you can do like dot get at some point too. I'm not really. Not really like well versed in this. I only did it for the uh when you're adding grades to the the object. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, no, that's uh yeah, that's that's pretty good. So I mean we could also filter directly right up there, as you said. Um, but yeah, I mean that, that is an acceptable approach. Um I've got a one an idea <clears throat> want to bounce it please. off you real quick. So it came up Saturday. There was a thing about deferring fields. And um, <clears throat> there were two things that you could do. Um, and so it would be up at Pokemon.objects.orbi, whatever. You do a dot only, and then you'd put in side of that the field you're interested in taking. Um, yes. Downside of that is, is that it can cause a lot of extra queries if you start to try to pull data from the fields that you haven't selected. Um, but that was that was something that I found when I was looking into um, uh, deferring over the weekend. Yeah, the dot only is also a good option as well. Um, there is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the filter or dot only is what I would say is probably a bit better than doing the for loop, but the syntax for that is a little, can be a little bit funny. Um, and also, like you said, it can be, it can be a little bit cumbersome sometimes and you might miss things. Um, so yeah, there are good options. Um, going from the brute force for loop to the modifying filter or selecting only certain um, certain fields. But there's one more approach that we haven't thought about too much. 
And that is instead of getting, instead of modifying this right before we output it, which is like right before the return response, or right at the beginning when we get all of the things that satisfy our query requirement, why don't we, why don't we play with the part in the middle? Play with the serialize. So again, what serialize does is it's a default Django function that takes the entire model and takes the model and yoinks it into a, a JSON formatted binary string. What if instead we told it to take the entire model, but only take part of the entire model when it's putting it into JSON? So otherwise, you know, like our Pokemon object here still has all of the Pokemons that we're looking for. But the serialized Pokemon has all of the Pokemons that we're looking for, but only some of their attributes. That way we're not messing with things right before it gets they get printed out or right after we get the, the full data set. So that is basically what we're going to be doing today, using custom serializers in order to do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is going to make a custom serializers file. So let me drag this away. So let's go Pokemon app. And new file, I'm going to call it serializers.py. And we're going to create uh, some custom serializers. So the first thing that we need to do is import our models and our serializers. Um, oh, I guess we should also do this for move as well while I'm here. I'll keep the models open. I'll keep the views as well. And let's go move app, move app. Uh, let's make a serializers.py. So let's start out with, with the move app because the, remember, just like we did in the views, the Pokemon views inherit for kind of from the move app and the move app related views. In the same way, the Pokemon app serializer is going to depend on our move app serializer as well. So let's start by serializing our, our move app. So the first thing that we need to do is import the generic serializers module. So that's going to be from REST framework, import serializers. So that way we can custom make our own. Uh, and we also need to import our model. So from dot models, import move. Okay, now it's time to actually make the serializer for custom setting our data. So if we go back to Chrome for a second, and if we look at the, the original model that we had with, with moves, I mean, we have so much data, right? We've got the, the model, the primary key, the name, the accuracy, the maximum uh, something, the also something, and then the power. Um, Let's say I don't want all of that. Let's say I just want name and power. Like, keep it really simple. Like, this is just like the basic statistics that I just want displayed up right here, right now. I can get those by, well, again, custom designing my serializer. So we go back to our serializers and let's start making our serializer class. So in the same way that we made the models and the views, we can make a serializer doing the exact same thing. So we're going to define a class, um, call it move serializer, and this is going to import from serializers dot uh, model. Let's see, model serializer, and we're going to make a subclass inside of that called the meta class. So it's a class meta. Uh, which is going to adjust, inherit from slash adjust the behavior of our default serializer. And now we just need to specify um, what our model is and what fields we want from it. So the model of our class is very clearly going to be the move model because it's a serializer for the move app. Um, and we need to now specify what fields we want um, in our uh, in our serializer. So fields are usually put in a uh, in a tuple, 
So you're going to be using parentheses. Um, and fields are also usually demarcated using the single quotation marks. So, and the fields again, uh, let's say the only thing I want is name and power and, you know, let's do name, power, and then like accuracy. Yeah, ah, that's probably good. We have nice three fields. Okay, cool. That's our move serializer done. Um, obviously, we will have to do some things to the views, uh, and I'll get to that, but this is what a serializer, a custom serializer looks like. You inherit from the base serializer class. You tell Django, hey, this is the specific class I want you to serialize, and these are the specific fields that I want you to serialize. Not all 15 of them, just these specific ones. Okay, any questions about how we made the move serializer? Okay, cool. So, you know, before we continue, actually, here, let me go into move app and let's just figure out if we can't um, just serial, just use our move serializer to change our views. So here, let me spin up the server real quick one more time and just run back to that server real quick and we'll go instead of Pokemon, we'll go to moves. You see, this is what our move app looks like. We have two moves. We have Kachow and Super Punch. Um, and we're seeing like everything, which is not necessarily what we want. So let's go back to our views here. Um, the first thing that we're going to need to do is, well, first we, we are importing Serialize. But instead of that, what we should do is import our custom Serializer. So we're going to say from dot Serializers, we're going to import our move serializer. And we're not going to need to import um, from Django Core anymore. However, when I do that, uh, we run into a slight problem. It's a, oh, here, you know, let's, let's keep the, the Django one just as a backup in case everything breaks. Now, though, we, we don't need serialize anymore because, again, we're using our custom serialize function. So instead, what we should do is replace that serialize bit with a, um, my our custom serialized. So let's see. So what we could do is uh, let's delete this and change it into move. And we don't need to use json.loads anymore either. So we're now instead, we're going to say uh, uh, hashtag use custom serializer to turn moves into json. Um, and we don't need to do that. So what we can now say is like moves serialized equals move serializer. And now we have to run it on some instance. The instance that we'll run it on is going to be moves. And then let's see, that's going to be the, oh, we other also need to specify many equals true, just so that it knows that there's more than um than one object. And then the last thing that we're going to do is instead of returning the response of moves, now we're going to return the response of moves, move, no, moves serialized dot data. Now let's save that. Now let's see what happens when I go back to my API. Now hopefully this doesn't break everything. So let's hit refresh. And hey, look at that. We now only have the two fields. We have the name as Kachow, power, and accuracy. And the same thing for the second one. So our serial, our custom serializer worked. Um, so in practice, again, this is you create a custom serializer in order to eliminate certain fields from your serial from your JSON. And if you want to um, output those in your views by replacing the serialized default Django function with your custom serializer. Any questions about how that works before we do the same thing for our Pokemon? I have a question, and I'm sorry if I missed this 
but I realized that previously when we were using the serialize function, we would have to specify JSON, but I yes. don't think I saw anywhere here where we specify the format JSON. And I was just curious um, if it's just something that happens in the background. That's a good question. Uh, and the reason for that is because we are now doing this dot data. So here, let's see if it says anything. Uh, dot data, yeah, return list, any return dictionary. So when we create our custom serializer, um, it's automatically serializing it in some Django format. I don't exactly know what format, but we can check. Let's do like a print move serialized and let's rerun that. I'm going to go into, let's see, does the console show it? Um, no, yes. Okay, here, let's let me show you my console real quick. So I just told it to print out um, the move serializer when, when it ran. Uh, and we see here that it prints it out as, as a serializer, of, a serializer of a query set. When I then add in the response of dot data, the dot data essentially tells it to turn the query set in that serializer into a dictionary, which is basically JSON. So we don't have to tell it specifically to output it in JSON because of that. Does that kind of help? Yes, thank you. Any other questions? Good question, by the way. Okay, all right. So let's go do the exact same thing that we did for move app. We're gonna do this for our Pokemon. So we're gonna copy paste the code because we can. Copy, paste. Uh, now we're going to import Pokemon. Change this to Pokemon. We change our model. And oh, here, let me also just stop running the server very briefly so it won't keep rebooting itself. Um, close out of our move app views. And let's go back to our views.py here. Um, or, sorry, let's go to our model. Yeah, all right. So this contains our Pokemon model. Um, let's say the only things I want are name, description, and moves. Our name, level, I let's just do name, level, and moves. Nice and simple. So we'll change field this to level, and then we'll change field to moves. Is there something I might be missing here? Do you need to use the moves serializer in this? Yes. Why would I need to use the move serializer? Uh, so it knows how to display the moves under the Pokemon? Yeah, that's true. But I, uh, I guess more generally, what do you think would happen if we just left it like this? And I didn't end up using the uh, the move serializer. It would be the the list of integers. Yeah, probably it would either be the list of integers, or it would just spit out the re default serialized moves. Let's actually see which, because I'm not too sure. So let's leave it like this for now, and let me just write myself a placeholder. Use the move serializer. Please. So I'll do that when we come back to that in a second. So let's go back into our views.py. So we're going to do from serializers, import Pokemon serializer. We will we'll keep that. And we'll instead of doing JSON, we're going to change this to Pokemon serializer. I'm going to say Pokemon many equals true Pokemon. Uh, we don't need that. We should not need that. And we'll return a response of 
serialize Pokemon dot data. Let's hit save. Let's boot up the server. Oh, let's see. No module named serializers. Uh, ah, dot serializers. There we go. Okay, perfect. So let's go and switch back to Google Chrome. Let's go back to, instead of all moves, let's go to Pokemon. Yeah, so take a look at that. So our serializer worked, right? It prints out name and level and moves as we requested, but it's exactly what uh, you guys just said. We haven't serialized moves again. And when we don't serialize the moves, it just prints out the primary keys. So how do we fix that by, well, we fix that by serializing moves. So how do we serialize moves? We need to bring in the move serializer. So let's say we do from uh, move app dot serializers, import the move serializer. We're going to say that moves is now going to be move serializer. Um, oh, yeah, and we just need to say that the it's going to be many, many equals true. So now moves should be fully serialized. So if I were to go back to my API and rerun that, we see indeed our moves are now serialized as they should be. So to summarize the different the distinction between the default Django serializer and our custom serializers. The default Django serializer turns the entire thing, the entire model into JSON. So if you have sensitive information in your data set, and you're trying to spit that out in JSON, and you're trying not to spit that out in JSON, too bad. It's getting pushed to your API. Um, if you have data that you don't need the end user to see, too bad. That's also getting pushed in via your API, unless you design a custom serializer. Now, what a custom serializer lets us do is it lets us define which fields in Django or which fields in our Django model specifically we want being pushed to our API. So in this case, we chose name, level, and moves, or name, power, and accuracy. And it only lets those get pushed up. However, you we always need to make sure that we are serializing all fields that are going to get put out. Because if you don't serialize them, as we saw before, then it turns, so let's say, moves into just the primary keys and not the actual data sets. That is about it for lecture this evening. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.